<laughs> off the tree. Right. There's another part of the tradition which I love. And yes. to me, this is the best, single best TV story ever told. Sure. By a celebrity on TV. Well, of course. <laughs> I think you're supposed to applaud now, you idiots. Well, Oh God. I don't know. What? I wouldn't, I wouldn't antagonize the audience now <laughs> after what I'm we've not... just lived through. <laughs> All right. Ready? Oh, yes, I am ready. <laughs> I lived in Charlotte, North Carolina when I was a disc jockey, yeah. and I used to open uh, uh, Dodge dealerships. Uh, with the Lone Ranger. I would go around and open Dodge dealerships. Now, when you say the Lone Ranger, it was the real Clayton guy. Moore, Clayton Moore, the actual Moore. Clayton Moore. He took it very seriously. He was very stoic. Uh, we would go. Uh, he had the guns. He had the, the sky blue outfit. He had the hat. He had the mask. He had the whole thing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we would stand. He wouldn't tell us many things. Once I asked him if Tonto really meant stupid in Spanish, and that's why they call the end in Tonto. <laughs> and did Kimosabi mean kiss my ass in Navajo? Yeah. Yeah. You want to say? Yeah. So Took my, it very seriously. Very seriously. Always met, dressed met as the children. He was else, the right. Lone Ranger. I was a long-haired guy. My friend Mike Martin and I would go behind the dumpster during the appearance, and we would get all herbed up. Right. And we would <laughs> continue to be herbed up as the appearance went, as the appearance went. So as the appearance drew to a close, we were not sure where we were or what planet we were on or what, what we were doing or who anybody was. And, and we didn't even know what car dealership we were at after a while. Mm -hmm. So I was just about to get my old beat-up Volvo to right. go home, and, it, and, and they didn't have a ride for the Lone Ranger to get back to the Red Roof Inn, uh, which was on Moorhead Boulevard. So he turns to us and he said, could you, someone give me, I said, we'll give you a ride back. Right. So we put him in my old beat-up Volvo, and he sits in the back, and he's the Lone Ranger. Got the mask. He got the mask everything. and the hat and right. the whole thing, and he had to, like, hold his guns to get into the car, you know, and he sits in the back of the car like this, and Mike and I are trying not to act stone. So we're like... <laughs> <laughs> we're going about, you know, four miles an hour down, you know. <laughs> we're not saying a word. We stop. It's, you know, 5 o'clock traffic. This middle-aged guy in a Buick in front of us, he, he stopped, and all of a sudden he wants to get out of the traffic. He backs into the car. I can hear my headlight crash. And he pulls away, and he, and he runs away. And I go, my God, he busted my car uh, up. Uh. So I, I, we got to catch it. So I pull out in my Volvo, and I begin to chase him. we got five cylinders. I'm chasing him, you know. And in the back, the Lone Ranger is just in the back like this, <laughs> stoic, not saying a word, just in the back like that, just like that. We chase this guy in the Buick, and we, we, we pull in front of him like that, and Mike and I both jump out, and we go, hey, man, yeah. you crashed into our car back there. He says, I did not. I said, yes, you did. So Mike gets out, and he goes, yes, you did, man. So we're all saying that to him, and he says, well, really, why don't you call the cops? Who do you think they're going to believe, me or you two hippie freaks? And the Lone Ranger gets out of the car. <laughs> He says, they'll believe me, citizen. <laughs> and the guy says, I didn't know it was you. <laughs> didn't know. Didn't, didn't know it was you. you.